<laughs> hey what's up guys in this video we're gonna be going over my camera gear that I have in my camera bag and why I recommend that camera gear for landscape photography right after this Hey, what's up guys and welcome into the video. I'm David Johnston and on this channel, we talk landscape photography. So if you're new to this channel or if you're into landscape photography at all, consider subscribing below. Now, in this video specifically, I've been getting a lot of questions on what kind of camera gear that I use. Now, everybody's been like commenting or sending me emails about what camera gear do I use and why. And a couple times on this channel I've talked about why I decide to use a minimal amount of camera gear to keep everything very very simple and then also just to minimize the amount of space and weight that I carry with me whenever I go out shooting so in this channel I'm gonna be talking about all the kind of gear that I use and take with me on any given day that I go out to shoot so number one, let's start with the actual bag that I'm using. I'm using a Peak Design everyday camera bag as my everyday camera bag. So the Peak Design bag is really good if you're going out to shoot uh, basically anything. I've actually trail run with this bag before and, and it does really nicely. So if you think that this is a bag only for professional photographers or portrait photographers or wedding photographers. It's just not true. It has a lot of good landscape capabilities too. It's a really good bag, divides all your gear in different spaces and keeps it there, which is what I love. A lot of time those insert dividers kind of rattle around and loses some of the camera gear. So I like that this holds your gear in place really, really firmly. I also love this camera bag because it's smaller and more compact. If I am going out camping, I will use the Mindshift Gear Ultralight Dual 36 liter camera bag. And by the way, all this camera equipment is going to be linked below in the video description for you to check out on your own. I also take tons of different things in the everyday camera bag. And my circular polarizer here it has all these slots that you can put different things into. On the other side, I hold all of my memory cards, SD cards, uh, camera charger, thing like that. But it has all these separate compartments like, like these side inserts that you can go ahead and put all of your extra gadgets into, re cable release. Uh, and then here are those inserts that you can put different camera equipment into that work really, really well. I did a specific gear review on this camera bag that you can watch. If you click on this card right here showing up on your screen, you can check that out. The next thing that I always pack in my camera bag is my tripod, but also my tripod head. Now, this is a Vanguard tripod head. This is the BBH 100. It's a really sturdy tripod head that I've used. It's really easy to maneuver holds your camera really firm, has a nice ball head on it. I really like this. Uh, I really like this ball head for landscape photography. And also panos, it makes it really easy. You can just undo this lock right here, spin your ball head around, and you can really easy do panos if you have your tripod level. I love this ball head, and it's probably the favorite that I've ever owned. This is the Vanguard BBH 100. And then also my tripod, I use the Vanguard Alta Pro 263AT. Now this is a aluminum tripod. Why aluminum? I know a lot of photographers shoot carbon fiber. They love carbon fiber. It's so light, it's so handy to take around. But really I found with the aluminum tripod, I get sturdier shots, even though it is like five to 10 times heavier than the carbon fiber tripods. It's also a lot cheaper. So if you can carry extra weight and you're looking for sturdier tripods, I recommend aluminum ones. I know some people are going to think differently about that but I don't want my camera gear falling over in high winds where I shoot quite, quite often being up in the mountains fairly often. So this is a really good tripod, has three leg extensions that you can use, has rubber feet that you can switch out to metal pointed feet with spikes on the end if you want a little bit sturdier 
uh, spikes in rocky conditions. So this is a really good tripod. I've had it for a long time. It's really sturdy. It's probably about to break. And honestly, I will buy another one of these just because I've loved it so much. But what about camera equipment? Now, I only take with me two camera lenses whenever I go out and shoot. Why is that? Well, watch this video that I made right here on why you should only use two lenses for landscape photography. But let's get into these lenses. So lens number one is a Sony 70-200 f4. I chose the f4 over the f2.8 just because it's cheaper, it's slightly lighter, and it produces really good quality. But I also made a video on that if you want to click on this card right here. I love this lens. I've been using it a ton for all photography, including landscape photography, and it's probably my favorite lens that I've ever owned. Again, all this gear is linked below in the video description for you to check out. I'm shooting with a Sony mirrorless system, so this lens integrates with that system, but they also make 70-200 f4s that integrate with other mounts, or if you're shooting with like Canon or Nikon, uh, 70 to 200 f4 is what I would choose for landscape photography over like a 2.4 to 2.8 anything like that so love this lens keep it in my bag all the time and lately I've been having it attached to my camera all the time as my go-to lens for any photography the next lens that I shoot with is a Rokinon 12 millimeter f2 solid solid lens for wide angle shots for landscape photography also an amazing lens for night photography if you're into night photography at all definitely check out Rokinons they're a solid lens for if you're shooting with a mirrorless system and they also make lenses that uh, mount to any other camera so you can look those up on their website but this is a really good lens for night photography and it's probably my favorite wide angle that I've ever used. It's a lot cheaper than like your Canon or Nikon lenses. So definitely check these out if they match your mount on your camera. And I also did a full gear review on this lens too if you click this card on the top left part of your screen. Really good lens, obviously tiny, compact, but packs a huge punch in any photograph. But what about the camera specifically? I'm shooting with a Sony a6000. And in 2018, while this is being recorded, you know, they've come out with a couple extra like upgrades to the a6000 bodies, the a6300, a6500. But honestly, you can get the a6000 for a lot cheaper and the upgrades on the 6300 or the 6500 aren't significant enough for me to spend the extra money on the upgrades for this camera body. I still think they're similar enough that you can spend much less getting the a6000 and keeping some extra money in your pocket for other photography equipment just because I don't think Sony's done enough to this model of camera with the recent uh, upgrades to the camera bodies. So I stick with the a6000 once I see enough significant increase with like megapixel count or features that the camera can do. I'm going to stick with the a6000 because this honestly even for landscapes and I know it's like a crop sensor and tons of people love full frames for landscapes. But the, this camera paired with the Rokinon 12 millimeter, it's still gonna give you something like you were shooting with like an 18 millimeter or 24 millimeter, something within that range if you were using a full frame. So this camera body is amazing and I'm, I'm shooting street photography, travel photography, adventure photography. So this camera body honestly does it all. I also have an L bracket mounted to this camera makes it really easy to switch from landscape to portrait really quick on my ball head because it has this extra foot on each end that I can just switch up and down. Makes it for really fast changes on my ball head. I'm not like maneuvering the ball head, like trying to find the little gap where it is and trying to figure all that stuff out. So it makes it really, really fast for infield changes. But what about those silky smooth shots or aerial shots? I also carry with me my DJI Mavic Pro, which I absolutely love. I know drone photography has been getting really popular, especially those straight down bird's eye view shots for landscapes. 
this camera on this DJI Mavic Pro drone does a really good job of capturing those shots. Very high quality, very good camera on this DJI Mavic Pro. So guys, honestly, that does it for camera gear that I carry with me all the time. Like I said, I keep my gear really simple and really small. So that's, it's just, don't overcomplicate things. Like don't spend so much time thinking about, well, I have an 18 to 24, but I also have a 35 to 50 lens that I can use, or I also have the 70 to 200. And I know you want lenses to fill gaps of spaces so you can get the shots that you wanna get. But honestly, if you try simplifying your photo gear, it makes you more inclined to think differently about your photography and more creatively about your photography. And I've found in my own personal photography, it has yielded so much better photographs than what I was originally taking when I was carrying more gear with me. That does it for this video, guys. Again, if you want any of the gear links, they're linked below in the video description. If you like this video at all, hit the thumbs up, comment below on some of your favorite gear for the question of the day, and subscribe to this channel if you love landscape photography because we're hitting the trails all the time for you.